Armoral, one of the giants and most historical brands in car care. So why are they so divisive in the industry? Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are looking into the brand Armoral as we try to work out why a lot of people refuse to use their products. Growing up, Armoral was always the brand you thought of when someone was talking about cleaning the interior of their car. To be fair, there were only two brands that I knew of for car care. These were Armoral and Turtle Wax. This was growing up in Australia. However, since then, there have been more and more brands popping up now, specialising in car care. Therefore, the average consumer has more variety with different formulas and preferences. We are a lot more spoilt for choice than what we were in the 80s and 90s. With the benefit of hindsight on our side, we look back at Armour All non-favourably. Let's find out why. So to start my investigation, I needed some anecdotal evidence. So I went to the two most opinionated places I could think of, Reddit and Facebook. After filtering out the sarcastic comments, I narrowed down the biggest gripes that people had with Armour All. These were, it leaves a greasy, streaky and slippery finish, doesn't clean well, it just covers up the dust, it attracts dust and leaves a film on the windscreen, it cracks the interior plastics in the car. First thing I notice is that Armour All have a complete catalogue of car care, ranging from car wash, waxes, headlight restoration kits, glass, trim, wheels and tyres, and so much more. However, all the complaints were with only one product, their interior cleaner. So let's do a deep dive into Armour All's interior cleaner then. Armour All was founded in 1962 by polymer chemist Joe Pelcher. Joe discovered a miracle formula that protected rubber, plastic, and vinyl from UV radiation and ozone. It's now becoming more apparent to me as to why they're judged on this one product. In 1966, Joe started selling his miracle formula under the name Tridon. Tridon is no dirt spelt backwards. Six years later in 1972, marketing expert Alan Rapinski bought the rights to Joe's company and renamed the protectant to Armorol. He then patented Armorol and got his second patent three years later for the formula. This, I believe, is where the problem lies. As to my knowledge, the formula hasn't changed or been innovated. The last reported innovation of this formula is 1976. That's almost 50 years ago. Since then, Armour has come out with various different products and has been taken over by some giant companies. It is currently owned by Energizer Holding. Yes, the batteries. They have, however, left their interior cleaner formula untouched. It's time to look into Rapinski's patent for the formula of Armour interior protectant. The ingredient that stands out is the polydimethylsiloxane, or PDMS for short. This is a type of silicon. This is what many people theorize leaves a shiny and streaky finish, as well as cracks in the interior plastics. I was unable to find any experiments showing the effects of PDMS on vinyl or plastics. However, the anecdotal theories say that after time, Armour All can discolor, crack, and fade the plastics. This ingredient and belief is very divisive as none of Armour All's competitors use this ingredient. In Meguiar's Natural Shine Protectant, they use silicon polymer emulsion blend rather than PDMS. In Australia, we have a brand called Bowden's Own who feature quite heavily on my channel. Bowden's Own have really leaned into the pylon of Armour All. They proudly advertise 100% silicon free in large letters on their bottle. They also use a silicon polymer emulsion blend. Turtle Wax, however, use an ingredient called Octamethyl silo tetrasiloxane, or D4 for short. I think I'm gonna call it D4. After a lengthy chat with a scientist, I think I've got my head around the difference. The main difference for the silicon polymer emulsion blend is the tech advantages with the polymers, meaning they have a strong, stronger chemical bond, thus harder to crack and reduce susceptibility to environmental damage. As for D4 found in the turtle wax, the component has silicon atoms attached to two oxygen atoms and two methyl groups, whereas PDMS is made of two oxygen atoms and two alkyl groups. This means the PDMS located in Armour All is more reactive to environmental factors than the D4 in the turtle wax. Both compounds are built differently where the D4 is stronger than the PDMS. <sighs> My brain hurts. Hopefully yours doesn't. Back to normal people talk. My theory, and it's just a theory, is that Armour All leaves a glossy finish. This attracts sun and UV, and over time, the environmental factors have broken down the product, and this has caused discoloring and fracking on certain cars' interiors plastics. Most of the complaints that I have read are based on older cars. However, as we have advanced as a society, I would recommend Armour All to reformulate their mixture or take a page out of the competitor's book and use technology that we have made.
agreed. Looking at the other side of the argument, there is no direct evidence that armor oil causes discoloring or cracking on car interiors. As previously mentioned, a lot of anecdotal evidence is based on older cars where the quality of the interiors may not be as good and they were going to crack anyway. I think it's interesting that the entire brand are being judged based on the one product. What do you guys think? Tell me your experiences with the product. Do you think the hate is deserved or do you think it gets a bad rap for nothing? Thank you for watching this different video today. I've put a lot of effort into researching this, so if you could subscribe, that would mean the absolute world to me. Thanks again for watching.